Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to solve a system of equations by using what we call the substitution method. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So essentially what the substitution method is, all right, we are going to substitute one of our equations into the other. It's kind of similar to how when you plug in a value for x or y, but this time, instead of plugging in a number, we're going to actually plug in an equation. What we're going to do is we're going to take this top equation. We have two equations here, y equals 6 minus x, and on the bottom we have 4x minus 3y equals negative 4. And essentially, what we do is that since we know that y is equal to 6 minus x, we can replace this y underneath, and we can substitute it with 6 minus x because that's what y equals okay so we take this part the 6 minus x and we're going to plug it into this equation that's underneath it which is 4x minus instead of 3y now I'm going to have that 6 minus x and everything else in the equation stays the same so it's still going to equal negative 4 the reason why we do this is because now if you compare my equation and you look at it, I now have nothing but x's, which means I can actually solve this equation for x. And once I find x, that'll allow me to find y. Our goal here is to find what x and y equal. And in order to do that, we need to substitute 6 minus x for y on the bottom equation. So let's go ahead. And let's continue working this out. We get 4x. We're going to distribute this negative 3 to this 6. That's negative 3 times 6 would give me negative 18. And then negative 3 times a negative x. That would be a positive 3x. And that equals negative 4. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to combine my like terms. The 4x and the 3x. That would be 7x minus 18 equals negative 4. I can then add 18 to both sides. I get 7x equals, here I get 14. I can then go ahead and divide by 2 on both sides, or sorry, by 7. That should get me x equals 2. Now that I know x, I can use this top equation. I can plug that into the top equation and find out what y would be. Now that I know x is 2, if y is equal to 6 minus x, I can plug x in and find out what y would be. So let's go ahead and we're actually going to write it off to the side though. If y is equal to 6 minus x, but I'm going to take this guy and plug him in right here, that would give me y equals 6 minus, instead of x now, I know x is 2. So that means y equals 4. And remember, the solution to a system of equations is the point where these two lines have in common okay so it's a lot of times the point where they cross so I would write my answer as a point or as an ordered pair which would be 2 comma 4 the point 2 comma 4 is the only point that both of these lines share and that's how we solve by using the substitution method now sometimes we'll substitute y but we can also substitute x so let's go ahead and look at an example where we're going to substitute in x. So here they tell me that x equals negative y plus 3. And underneath that I have an equation 3x minus 2y equals negative 1. So what I want to do this time is I want to take what x equals, which is negative y plus 3, and I want to plug it in for the x on the bottom. If x equals negative y plus 3, then I can plug it in for the x on the bottom. So that would end up getting me 3 times, this time I'm going to have negative y plus 3, 
and everything else from this equation stays the same. Minus 2y equals negative 1. And now I go ahead and I distribute. 3 times negative y would be negative 3y. 3 times 3 would be a positive 9. And everything else will stay the same. Minus 2y equals negative 1. And you'll notice now that when we plug in or when we substitute for x, now we're just left with y's. So unlike the last problem where we solved for x first, in this problem we're going to solve for y first. So now I can combine the, these two, the negative 3y and the negative 2y. That would give me a negative 5y plus 9 equals negative 1. I can go ahead and subtract 9 from both sides. That leaves me with negative 5y equals negative 10. Then all I have to do now is divide by negative 5 on both sides. And I end up getting that y is going to equal 2. So now I know y is 2. And we do the same thing as we did last time where now that I know what y is, I'm going to use that to help me find what x should be. So I take this equation on the top, x minus y plus 3, I'm sorry, that's not the equation, x equals negative y plus 3. I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to plug it in there. So now I'm going to get x equals negative, instead of y, I know y is 2, so I'm going to plug in 2 plus 3. So negative 2 plus 3, that would be 1. So again, we write our answers as an ordered pair, so I'm going to go ahead and parentheses 1, comma, 2. And that's my answer. This would be the point where these lines cross. <laughs> a point that's on both of those lines, hence my solution to this system of equations. So hopefully now you feel comfortable enough to use the substitution method to solve problems. Now I will say this, there are other methods that are more efficient to do this, but if you notice on the problems that we saw, in both cases you could see here that one equation was written in standard form, and the other equation had one variable singled out. So in this equation we had x singled out, and in the previous equation we had y singled out. And then the other one was in standard form. There are times where you'll see equations written both in standard form, and when you see that, you're actually going to want to go ahead and use the elimination method, which is the video that will follow this one. So if you're interested in how to do something like that, definitely watch that one video. Okay, other than that, Substitution method is nice when we have an equation that's already singled out one variable and the other one we just have to plug it in and we can find x and y. You can also graph these two equations. These are all three different methods, graphing, substitution, and elimination. Those are three different methods on how we can solve system of equations and really a big part of this is being able to figure out which one is easier for this problem that I have. As always, I just want to thank you guys for watching and I really do hope that you continue to learn through these videos.